Are you looking for one of the cheapest, fastest, and easiest, and most efficient building methods for your building project? Stick around, we've got a lot to go over. Hello and welcome to my tiny house project. Today's the aircrete installment. We're gonna be addressing the aircrete process and what the mix looks like. We're gonna be talking about what it costs to build with aircrete versus traditional building methods. We're also gonna be talking about how to increase the structural integrity of the aircrete. And we're gonna be talking about some of the problems that aircrete presents and how we got around them that other channels aren't talking about. So make sure you stay with me and don't miss out. When you're building a project like this, I recommend using four and eight foot increments. And the reason that is, it's gonna be a lot easier for you. You're gonna make less cuts, you're gonna have less waste, and it's just gonna be more economical. So when we laid this building out, we laid these posts out. These posts are in the ground about 16 inches and they're in concrete, okay? So there's nothing abnormal or untraditional about the structure that you see here. When you're building these, you wanna make sure that you have some way of locking this panel into this post. Cause you don't wanna be able to bump the panel with a lawnmower or your car, or even put a ladder on the outside and the panel fall in from the post. So what we did was, is we drilled holes in the post completely and put 3 h rebar all the way through the post. And we just overlap it and you can see that we tied it. This is about a two foot overlap. And you can see the, the uh, tie wire here is tying the rebar together. Now we also tie wired the chicken wire to the rebar and we just twisted three inch screws in the chicken wire and screwed it into the post. Now this one's not completely done. What we try to do is about five attachments here up and down through here and that gives the, the panel a good anchor to the post so the panel can't be pushed to the inside or the outside of the post. And it substantially uh, increases the, the breaking strength uh, of, the, of the air creek. So if you use these principles, you'll have a, a strong wall that's not gonna break free from your post and it's gonna have better longevity. You're gonna be able to bump it with your lawnmower, maybe put a ladder against it without having to worry about it. So after you get the chicken wire up and get it attached, the next step is the forms. We elected to use four by eight sheets of three quarter inch plywood and uh, we didn't want it, the forms to distort or bulge under the weight of the concrete or the aircrete, and so we put two befores at three different locations up and down it to keep it from bulging out. So we've got a piece of three quarter inch with three two befores on this side, and a piece of three quarter inch with three two befores on that side. Now we're using the same form, and we'll pour this section, then move it and pour the next section, and move it and pour the next section. So we're only using two pieces of plywood and six two befores for this whole process because we're just moving these forms around. Once we put these forms up, uh, we are caulking it with silicone caulk because the the mix is a little runny. You know, aircrete is a little thin and it'll run out on you. And so we found that caulking that at the corners there, there's probably two or three screws between these two befores and two or three screws between that two before, and there's gravel or dirt piled up against the bottom down there, right, in order to keep that uh, from running out. With any concrete form, you gotta have a good releasing agent if you're gonna reuse that form over and over. We initially started by painting our plywood on the inside with a sealer, but the aircrete has a tendency to stick a little bit more, we found, than the or even a traditional concrete. So we got away from using the diesel fuel and we went to just wrapping the form in the plastic itself here, because that it, it releases much easier with plastic on the inside of the forms. So the mix that we're using is two parts water to one part Portland by weight. So we was originally was going to mix it in a 50 gallon drum to make it larger. But pouring such a small form, we found that it's unnecessary. So we're mixing it in just five gallon buckets. So we're in the bottom of a five gallon bucket, two of these of Portland, two of these of water, and we're mixing that and we're calling that a slurry. And then on top of that slurry, 
we're putting our foam. We're filling that whatever's left in volume of that bucket up from the two and two. We fill the rest of that bucket up to the top with foam and we mix that foam into that slurry. There are several ways that you can make the foam. Um, it's pretty easy to build a foam machine yourself, but you gotta hit the right consistency with the foam. We, we originally bought a pump and uh, made a pump and hooked a compressor up to it and got some PVC parts in order to make our foam and we made our own foam machine. By the time we had our foam machine dialed in, making the foam at the consistency that we wanted it, we realized we should have just went ahead and buy the Little Dragon foam machine. And that's what we've done. We've got the Little Dragon foam machine. You can look it up online. You can find it. It's about a $300 machine. Different places sell it for different prices. Now the foam has to be gotten at the correct consistency. You want the foam to have enough body where it will build up. If it's just running through your fingers in your hand and not piling up in your hand like shaving cream, then that foam is too thin. You want that foam to build. What we found is, is if you use your air pressure on your um, compressor at about 90 pounds and keep your little dragon set on about 60 pounds, we turn the foam machine on, we give that foam time to enough to run out to reach its consistency and build up and get, get its body, and we want to use a foam with a good body. And the way, what we're using to make our foam is just dish soap from the dollar store, right? And we're using two cups of dish soap and five gallons of water in the Little Dragon at about 90 PSI on the compressor and about 65 pounds on the dial here on the Little Dragon makes a really good consistent high body foam. Let's talk about insulation value. You can see all these voids that comes in this aircrete from this foam. That's the purpose of putting the foam in, is to get the air into it, which creates the voids, which increases insulation value. Aircrete at this ratio mix is said to be R6 per inch. So we're pouring our walls at three and a half inches, so that comes out to R21. If that was a traditional built house with bat insulation, it would be R13, so that's a considerable advantage. All right, now when you get to pouring, there's a couple of considerations. You know, aircrete is very porous and concrete in general is porous. And we all know that concrete wicks up water. And we didn't want to wick up any extra water from the ground. And we wanted a good solid base for it to set on. There's no footer here. This aircrete's setting right on top of the red gravel. Now the posts are in, foot, are in concrete, but this is just setting right on top of the gravel, okay? So what we decided to do was, the other, one of the other issues is, is the aircrete is so lightweight that as you fill it up, you fill the form up, the weight of it wants to push it out the bottom. It's very easily runs out the bottom, right? And so we took regular cement and mixed it up kind of thick and we just dumped it in between the forms starting off about two inches thick. And the reasons we use the cement at the bottom is one, it prevents the aircrete from running out the bottom. It fills up those voids. So it works as a plug in the bottom once it sets up a little bit. Number two, it's going to give the aircrete a more solid foundation to set on with less water wicking up. One point of consideration is the following. You can see that there's some voids on these walls once you take the, the forms down, okay? Aircrete seems to cure very slowly, much more slowly than concrete. You can really tell a difference in just a few days when this aircrete, when you first pour it, it's really soft. Two and three days after, it's really soft. It doesn't really get hard until it's two weeks old minimum and you know normal concrete they say it doesn't cure for 30 days uh, so I'm saying that this probably doesn't reach maximum you know uh, PSI strength for much greater than 30 days um, but being the fact that it stays green like that also allows you to skim coat it after it's been poured you can see these voids here in the air creek now these is some of these is from where the wrinkles of the plastic wrinkled up and some of it's just where the uh, air creek fell out and didn't bond. Uh, but these voids can be easily skim coated with a mud knife with fresh aircrete and it bonds really well because the aircrete stays green so long. Some of the issues with aircrete, as I started thinking about it, I thought, you know, what I'm making is a concrete sponge. I have all these holes in it. So if water gets in this concrete, 
and then you get freeze thaw, you're gonna have worse cracking than if the concrete didn't have the pores. So wicking up water and water entering the concrete, number one, which will also lower your R value. And then the other thing is, is that it doesn't have very much abrasion resistance. It's kind of soft and you can scratch it. You see, I take this rock here and how easily I can etch into that. So we come up with a way to fix both of those issues. And it gives us a little more structural integrity and that is surface bonding concrete. Surface bonding concrete comes in a bag for about seven dollars a bag in 2021 here and it's got two inch long fiberglass fibers in it and it's used on concrete block walls so you know traditional laying concrete block walls with putting the mortar in between the blocks you can actually dry stack concrete block walls and then surface bonding concrete the outside with one eighth inch on each side of it and it's actually stronger than if you put mortar in between the, blo the blocks. So we're gonna be getting the structural integrity up. We're gonna be solving the abrasion resistance problem because the surface bonding concrete's gonna be out the outside and the surface bonding concrete comes white. So really once you trial that on and get that smooth, it's gonna look a lot like stucco. You can paint it, but you don't have to paint it. So surface bonding concrete is something that nobody else is doing to to, to address the water and to address the abrasion. All right, I wanna address the financial advantages. So I sat down and I figured up how much it was gonna cost me to build a 10 foot by 10 foot two before wall and put drywall on the inside, R13 bat insulation, then on the outside put sheeting, then wrap that in house wrap and then put vinyl siding on the outside. What I came up with is about $14 per square foot is what you have in a traditional built wall. On one of these four by eight panels that we're pouring, we're using two and a half bags of Portland cement. Those bags are costing us about $15 in 2021. Everybody's aware of what lumber costs are going up right now. You know, two before's have just went from $1.50 to $9. So we're pouring this wall, just the concrete, for about a dollar and 40 cents a square foot versus $14 a square foot traditional built while getting the advantage of an R21 wall versus a traditional built R13 wall. If you're looking for a low cost, high insulative, termite resistant, <laughs> waterproof, <laughs> long lasting, a building method, this is it. it. It can be done by anybody. My 20 year old nephew is doing this by himself. Once I helped him get through the process, he's down here pouring this now by himself and he has no prior construction experience whatsoever. Anybody can do this process. Okay, so this is my beginning of the tiny house. Um, this concludes the Air Crete installment. Um, we're gonna be doing lots of alternative things to this house, like a composting toilet, a gray water system. We're gonna be doing a gravity fed water system. We're probably gonna be putting some solar in here and some alternative lighting and much more. So make sure you subscribe and come back and see me. Surface bonding, con uh, okay. Eek, break, cut, you and all that